Okay, so I'm continuing on with this. We saw just a minute ago some, me putting in some of these trees in here. Some of those are gonna lean. I've got some little branches. Um, and so I'm gonna keep adding on, getting in here. And these, these trees probably are spaced a little more than I would, than they are in the picture, but I'm not gonna stress about it. I'm just gonna go with it. And um, this one, I'm not quite feeling that. This one needs to come down a little further because it's, it's closer than this one. Um, but it's such a skinny little thing that, um, so if you look in the picture, you'll see the bottom of this one and then below it kind of at least this much. And I, I might not be able to get, have as much space here at the edge of my road as is in the picture, but you know, we're just setting up some relationships here. So I wouldn't worry too much. I'm putting this branch cause I think it's kind of like a major branch over in that area. And I'll put in some of the, I'll put in a few of the other kind of ones going in different directions. Um, see, that one's too thick, but I'm, I'm going to be coming over top of it with some other things. And, um, you know, a couple things about branches. Um, sometimes I start with a really, I, I really ha love a liner brush. I have this one liner brush that is really great. But I don't, I don't think I have it right here, but. Um, I love that for, for doing some of these little thin, some of these thin lines. And sometimes I like to make those lines really pale um, because the way they, um, they kind of come in. All right, so I've got some of my line work, some of these branches kind of happening in there. I've got the distant trees. Notice how they're low contrast. I have this stuff in the foreground that's got a lot more kind of darkness to it. I might even go a little darker on this and really punch that down, punch this down. You know, sometimes you can start a little lighter and see if it's dark enough. And then if it's not, then you can, you can always take it down and that just adds, you know, a little more depth, a little more interest. And, you know, then that starts to make sense. So, um, this one I'm not satisfied with yet. It still feels like it's floating. So I'll keep working on that one. And part of why those still feel like they're floating is they there's, there's not a shadow being established yet. And so until I get that shadow established, they're not gonna kind of make sense in space and, and dimension. So now one of the things you might tend to wanna do is when you see shadow go oh, okay let me get my shadow color and start mixing that and one of the things i want to point out is the shadow for this area when it's on the green versus on the sort of road color versus back over here it's going to be different in each of those sections so you you want to avoid kind of going oh this is my shadow color and then sweeping across here um, I even think this is probably a little bright, but I kind of, I kind of like it because I, it just, it adds a little, little energy in there. Um, I've got some of my dullness on my brush. 
So um, I'm oftentimes a little bad about cleaning out my brush really well. And especially when I'm doing a demo and I'm kind of going pretty quickly. And I will probably have some transition areas. So right at the edge of a shadow, sometimes that makes sense to have that, you know, really precise shadow. And then sometimes you need a little bit of a transition. And I think this is one of the, gonna be one of those instances where it's gonna need a little transition. But also, this is not um, gonna get worked up in the same degree is your main painting when you're working larger and when you are working longer on it. You know, this is really a look at some of those value relationships and some of that, all that information. There's some, that area is wider in those shadows and this is a little wider. I kind of messed that up. That's all right. Okay. So on this road, this this shadow over here kind of connects in there. And the road is fairly grayish. But to me, it also has a little bit of a kind of pinkishness. It's, um, see, once again, you see my, sh my, um, my rinsing of my brush is done poorly, so I get some of that green coming through. Maybe that's a little better. Um, but in that kind of neutral area right there where I'm working, where there's really kind of a light spot, and then a light spot. And we'll see if this ends up being a little too light. This area is a little bit light back in here. Might have to put my shadow in there and then it gets a little. It's too pink. Sort of a rosiness to that road back there sort of a red, kind of a reddish gray in that distance. I'm gonna, mine's probably got one more color than I ultimately want it to have back there. But I kind of like bringing in some of that rosy color in here. It adds some interesting contrast um, kind of happening in there. And then I wanna get kind of at this edge. I want to probably a little transition. But just, you know, just kind of like each of these areas you're gonna kind of be playing with um, and seeing what happens in terms of those transitions. Okay, so, and then there's a lot going on over here and that's a pretty dark area. It's kind of got a nice sort of foresty green. And one of the things that if you get a green and you're like, oh, okay, this is way too, like, too vibrant. Or you get something, say you're mixing, say you're trying to use your phthalo. You know, in your brain, sometimes you might go, oh, yeah, green. It's green over there. And it's really not that kind of green. It's really a much earthier green. So one of the things I think is pe important for people to realize is if you add red to green, I added too much, it can turn it into a little bit more convincing kind of color. Um, you can, it makes it kind of earthier and a little more natural kind of color, like, like you would see where it's got a little bit of a brownishness. And so I've got sort of that kind of thing happening in there. And so over in here, I might really kind of play with, um, I might want more yellow. No, that's too much. That might work over here in some of these areas. That's what happens to me always is I start mixing one color and I'm like, oh, that looks great in another area. Um, 
And I think that's an important thing to kind of realize is like, if you're working with a color in an area and you're like, oh, wait a minute, Let, that color would work over here. Let me try it over here. Then you, you, should, you should definitely do that because you've got the color mixed. And what happens is if you go, oh, that color's over here, that color's over there, that color's over there, that color's over there, that color's over there, and you begin building it like that, then you're gonna realize and then create a composition where things start to coalesce together. Um, there's a good bit going on in here. Um, and I think playing with, you know, one of the things that people tend to do with um, landscape is they get into this, I'm making leaves kind of mode and it's too mechanical. And so I would encourage you in these exercises to look at the way some of the branching and some of the leaves are kind of clustered in some ways. Um, and then like, oh, most areas, there's gonna be at least three values. You know, um, I don't have a branch there, but I'm gonna kind of work a branch in later. Or the density maybe obscures that or I kind of dot it in as I'm going. Um, and then I'm just kind of looking at the movement of some of that color and some of that, um, some of those zones over in here as it gets in here and it's denser back behind there. And think of it more in terms of clusters. So this is this denser area here and it's going to take me you know a good bit more layering in order to get that to start to make sense um it it, it definitely will take a while um i'm just kind of playing and layering and mixing my color and getting it that nice and kind of earthy kind of green yellowy green trying okay now I've got something I want to mix yeah there we go so down at the bay down at you know kind of over in here it is super dark over in there and you get some of that light coming in a little bit and some color variation and some of that sky but uh, you know it really gets dark over there so look at how, how do you create that movement? Like all of this should be just like, how am I creating that movement? How does it create areas where it feels dense? And there's this kind of layering happening of different hues and values. Um, how many different colors does it take in a given area to make it feel like it's that layered space? Um, there's a kind down here at the ground. And I'll need to come back in and correct my trees when I'm, you know, ready. But at the ground tends to be the darkest. Um, because, you know, there's exceptions because that's where you have some shrubby bushes as well as, you know, more dense trees and things like that. I'm gonna make um, some of these colors, some of them warmer, some of them cooler. Now this little in-between space, like in a lot of ways, I probably should have done the back area back there just the way I did this, but that's okay. I can come back and correct those later on because those these are closer, so I wouldn't have this overlap of these, um, of these branches like I've got happening, kind of overlapping that. And just like down here, I, you know, I'll have to come back and correct that. And there's some areas where the sky opens up in, in here. You know, you might get some, um, 
And I think it can be useful to then have some really pale areas with your tree branches so that I, that creates that feeling of blurring at the edges of some of these branch clusters. So I'm not going to get this, you know, 100% worked up you know, in this demo, um, but I want you to see kind of what you can, you know, be working on, what you can be trying out, what you can be, you know, kind of playing with as you're developing these. Um, you know, I might come in and, you know, work on some of these little transition areas. Um, you know, where I've got different colors happening and thinking about, you know, how does that build out that space in a way that feels convincing and lively and interesting and not just, and not too dull. Um, but dull where it needs to be dull and vibrant where it needs to be vibrant. You know, because one of the things that I haven't had a chance to, you know, fully flesh out with you guys is when, you know, the relationship between more vibrant areas or dull areas, you know, warm, cool. So a composition becomes particularly convincing if you have a range of values from your lightest values to your darkest values and in between. And then you also have a degree varying vibrancy. You have vibrant colors and you have duller colors. And that obviously is going to be dependent upon the subject matter and the variables of the kind of what the colors are kind of inherently natively or what are the local colors as we oftentimes kind of describe it as local colors. Um, but it, um, it also, you know, really has to do with, um, kind of quality that you're trying to achieve and the density and certain attributes of the of the um, whatever the material textures and the way light plays on the surface um, and you know so this is uh, the second part I've done here is around 17 minutes or so um, and then the earlier parts were a little bit longer, I mean, a little bit shorter. So, you know, kind of thinking about, and I might paint a little bit faster. I might, you know, encourage you to look a little, slow down a little bit from what I've done. Um, but I'm kind of talking through it. Kind of getting some of that sky brought back in there and I'm actually I'm actually using a little more vibrant color in some of that sky that I'm sort of trying to thread in over here and you know when you're doing landscape one of the things I want to remind you is really force yourself to um, change your mark making and not get into a, a machine and it really takes a lot of effort. You know, when I when I worked on uh, an exhibit team and they were doing a lot of landscapes and they needed to be scientifically convincing, one of the things they had to continually talk about to one another, you know, keep your, keep your hands moving um, in different ways. Change your arm movement, twist your brush, Sometimes dab, sometimes scrub, sometimes swirl, you know, um, and kind of um, change the way you're doing that so that it doesn't look like a machine. And you, because our, our natural tendency sometimes is to create um, a mechanical precision um, that we're kind of working on. And that's not how nature looks. And so the more we can kind of um, work on that and kind of refine that, you know, our paintings will get more and more convincing. So I clearly haven't fleshed out all the foliage over here. 
Um, there's gonna be more of that. I'm gonna continue that, but I think this is enough to kind of give you a sense of um, the preliminary, the, um, the um, underpainting that you saw, and then working up the colors on top of it. And um, so the first day you're doing the tonal underpainting, and then the next day you're gonna do something that's a little more vivid and you'll um, use, instead of those kind of browns and things, you're gonna end up using something much more like this, where um, if the object, like, if the ob area is, is uh, green, you would go with something magenta or red because they are complements. And so that, in so much of this is kind of greens and reds, and so I've kind of done, you know, kept that pretty consistent over, overall and you don't have to over, get kind of overly analytical about it and take every single square in there and go okay is that blue green or green um what's the opposite of that but just a really kind of contrasting under layer so this is day two on this but that tonal underpainting where it was that one color that umber and a little bit of blue mixed in just to kind of dull it out because my umber is a little different than yours um and uh but you can just use your umber and just create different values to establish your main tones and then work your main colors on top of that. So anyway, good luck.